It's 10 a.m. in the morning in San Diego, California, and Amal Gibran is starting on a journey halfway across the globe to Gaza, Palestine. The reason for her trip is a seven-year-old girl named Farah. Farah was only three years old when Amal first met her in the most challenging circumstances. Farah was injured in a bomb attack on her home in Gaza, and her path crossed with Amal, leading to a relationship that can be given no name. Yet Amal finds herself on a plane bound for Gaza, a difficult journey to a dangerous destination, something perhaps only a mother could do for her child. My name is Farheen Omar, and like Amal, I also live in San Diego. When I met Amal some years ago and decided to follow her story, I had no idea it would lead to this extraordinary journey. Farah lived with her family in a small town called Beit Lahia on the outskirts of Gaza. Her town is on the border with Israel. And in November 2009, during a military attack on Gaza called Operation Castled, a phosphorus shell hit Farah's home. They were burned by the white phosphors. The mother was uh, seriously wounded and uh, other people were killed. We were, 80, we were 18 people here, all of us gathered in this dark place here. Suddenly we hear a powerful sound. She hit the uh, roof. Only I and another one came out, uh, succeeded to make their way out. What can you do? We were asking, what can you do for uh, this uh, young uh, girl who is uh, suffering from uh, phosphor burns? So that's, he was asking if you can help at least to seek your medical treatment outside Gaza for her. An American organization called Palestine Children Relief Fund was successful in bringing Farah to San Diego for free treatment. We do bring kids alone without their parents, uh, depending on their psychological and social abilities and capabilities. If they can feed themselves, they can clothe themselves, they can bathe themselves, there's a level of maturity, um, their injuries are not life-threatening. All of these factors come in and we do an evaluation and an assessment before they come. But Farah being three years old, was too young to come without a, uh, an adult guardian. And she was a case that was brought to our attention through our field worker in the northern Gaza Strip. And um, we started to try to find care for her. And we tried a, different, a few different places. And I contacted uh, an organization in San Diego called DOCS. And, um, and they had uh, replied back that they were willing to help, so we were very excited. We went to a PCR meeting and they were discussing uh, Farah coming to the United States. I called Hiyam the next day and uh, told her that I would like to host uh, Farah. <laughs> she is a child who was injured on January 4th of this year, 2009, during the Israeli assault on the Gaza Strip. Three of her uncles were killed. Her mother eventually died, uh, having gone to Egypt with the child for medical treatment and dying there. And most of the family was injured as well, including Farah, who suffered significant third-degree burns all over her body. Uh, so the family was destroyed, basically. It's a very sad story, and I guess the grandmother was with them too, and she had also some children uh, dying. Her grandmother has suffered um, a terrible loss. Her husband was killed, three of her sons were killed, and one of her daughters was killed. So she's psychologically, she's in enormous emotional pain, as one can imagine. Wow. Mm. 
Okay. Uh, she, they left to uh, Egypt, but they had to stay in Egypt in a hotel for 10 days to give them the permission to leave Egypt and come uh, to the United States. The Gaza Strip is under siege. It's under siege in the north and in the east by the Israelis and in the south by the Egyptians. The borders are closed. Uh, all access in and out is under the control of the Egyptian and the Israeli authorities. She has not been given a permit to leave the Gaza Strip along with several other injured kids. The last group we brought in early September waited four months to get a permit to leave the Gaza Strip from the Egyptian authorities. We don't even try to bring them through Israel. It's fruitless. So they missed the plane in Frankfurt by two hours. And uh, then they had uh, to make other plans for them to come to the United States. Hello, Shway. Shway, Shway. She will be okay. Just tell you about it, Mr. Hayat. It's okay. Where are you, Aya Farah? Farah. She felt uncomfortable and confused. First of all, um, from her long trip from Gaza to uh, San Diego. Actually, on Tuesday, we have a first appointment with her doctor, and he's going to see her for the first time. After that, we will decide, he will decide how many surgeries she needs. But Absolutely, she needs more than one surgery because it's a severe burn. We contacted Dr. Patra. Uh, he is a skin specialist who volunteered his services to treat kids. And uh, luckily, he agreed to treat Farah for free. She is her grandmother. Her grandmother, OK. okay. So uh, let me take a look here. Come on over here. You want to come here? Come on, let me take a look at you. How are you? I'm just going to keep her leg. She's going to cry. No, she's good girl. Uh, good girl. Farah, uh, first visit the, to the doctor was not easy for all of us. I think uh, from her past experience, uh, um, her visit uh, to the doc uh, to the doctor uh, triggers painful memory in her brain and uh, uh, so it was not at, uh, at ease for her to show him her wounds you could have to have the grandmother just pull her head back and I'll take uh, okay. yeah, her yeah Okay. You put balloons in under the skin and you oh, seal them up over time, and then they stretch the normal skin yeah. out, and then you cut out some of the burn scar. Once you put tissue expanders in, she's going to probably have to come in every week or two weeks, and you know we have to put a needle in there to fill fluid up, and that's going to be a tough thing for her. But that expander every time she comes in until there's enough new skin available that we can cut out some of that burn tissue and you know make things look better. The next time I meet Farah, she is no longer staying with her first host family and has moved in with Amal Jibran, a retired nurse. Is she staying with you now? Yeah. Okay. Amal is getting Farah ready for her first surgery, and I can see that Farah has quickly become very comfortable under her care. Amal is settled with her family in the U.S. since 1982, but she is originally from Haifa, a city in northern Israel. She is Christian by faith and Arab by ethnicity. Born in Haifa, uh, the oldest of four children. My dad, actually, he is from Lebanon, Protestant school. And from them, I went to the high school, the Greek Orthodox high school. I decided to be a nurse when I was 16. See somebody walking into the hospital, and he was my sweetheart that time. And I was busy 16 hours a day taking care of these patients. And he said, I'm coming here. We get married. Five weeks later, we get married. Emigrate to the United States. I was here in 1982, Christmas time. I can't speak the English so well. I can't work as a nurse until I 
pass the state board examination. So I can do something on the side, which I love to do it. So I started as with a PCRF. And since my kids grow, I have three kids, since my kids grow up, I can rely on them to, to feed themselves. I volunteer with a mission abroad. Bustan, ah, al Bustan. Bab Bustan. Before Thanksgiving, I get I was at the church when Ibrahim, my friend, came to me. He said, did you get a note about there is a, a child with a grandma here? At the door. Open door. Please. Yes. Please open door. I do that. Uh -huh. OK. I brought the child and the grandma to my house. At the beginning, she was stopper. If she sit there, she wanted everything there. And if you told her to pick what she dropped, she refused. And she stand there. She wanted always the lights on. Don't close door. Don't turn the lights off. Don't sleep by herself. Lucky, I can, I can see the difference. And some friends coming back, visit us from time to time. They can tell me she is getting better. Will they come play? Jump. Jump. Amal's husband and daughter also quickly became involved in taking care of Farah. She was about the third or fourth one we had, uh, but Farah was a very unique child, especially after what she went through, all these tragedies she went through. We pretty much fell in love with her the very first day uh, we saw her. Uh, I was there, uh, I guess, uh, uh, playing the role of father for, uh, for Farah and whatever she needs and whatever my wife wants. Farah was very timid when she came here. Uh, and I guess the tragedy was still fresh in her, in her mind. Uh, you probably can hear now the airplane going by. She, they used to scare her, probably remind her with the tragedy. Uh, and that faded with time. As the time progressed, she got used to the house, she got used to the family and everybody here, and she felt very comfortable. And she became a member of our family. When Farah first came to us, her state of mind at that time, she was very, uh, maybe, um, isolative and a little bit, um, although she was very personable, she, you could tell that she had her guard up. She wasn't sure what was to come, where she was going to move, be moved to, or what will happen to her the next day. Very, very quickly, she became very um, open with us. Um, she, she started to smile and to laugh and to be very uh, attached to us as well. Only a few days after Farah moved to Amal's home, her grandmother became very ill and had to leave for Egypt as her treatment could not be done here, leaving Farah alone in the care of Amal. The most I found at that time that the grandma is more sick than Farah, than the child. And days later, the blood test came that her hemoglobin is 4.6 and her hematocrit was 16. So she needed right away a hospital and blood transfusions and make her to agree that it's good for the, for the future of the child to stay. And for her, she need a lot of help. And she ended going in December 23rd. She wasn't bleeding, she was in my house, she bleeding for months. With her only family member gone, I was concerned about how Farah would cope. But when I met her at the time of her first surgery, she seemed very content. <laughs> I haven't talked to the anesthesiologist, but hopefully they'll be able to mask her Father, as opposed to, yeah. 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 She's good. She made it. She made it. Get ready. I'm sorry. So Hayama, since the grandmother left, has she been okay with the no, yeah. with the family? No problem. No problem. Yeah. She is very easy to go. Yeah. And she adopt any 
any situation easily. She understands. She's very smart, very enjoyable to deal with. If you explain to her, she will ask so many questions. You give her the right answer, and she will accept it, and she will move on. Ninety percent, that's the, by the doctor, the surgeon, 90 percent of her bad skin been removed to have six incision around her body and they implant the balloon on her back so they can extend the skin later on. Mm. The first night wasn't a pleasant night for her at all. She wake up at the pediatric patio screaming, crying, until they give her some narcotic to calm her down. And we've been doing this since then. And all night we try to change her position because everything is in pain. When we try to change her position, her position so she can face me, we moved all the bed and we can keep holding hand all night. The first couple of weeks was pretty hard. She needs uh, virtually 24 hour care. And she has to take medica medication every six hours. So Amel has to be up every, all night basically, taking care of her. Bye bye. <laughs> Giving her medicine and you know, she was in pain and she needed somebody there just like any child. Uh, and I remember the, you know, the, the, you know, after the first surgery, she woke up, she was calling, I guess, for her father or somebody. I don't think she was fully conscious at that time. And she doesn't like to see them, actually, yeah. because it's still, you can see, it's a it's painful scar with the blood there. So those were the most difficult days, I would say, of the whole journey is the fact that she had to prep her for surgery and watch her go through it. And then the recovery time was always a challenge because of course Farah is very um, flexible and running around and energetic. So to be confined to a stroller while she recuperates and takes medication was very difficult to see. Good to see you. And she loved the playground, she loved the water, she loved the sand, but she couldn't, she couldn't do any of it. She just sat there. So that was probably the most heartbreaking time is when I just, you know, you know, she just sat there. And so I took her out of the stroller, I put her in my lap and just said, when you get better, you know, we're going to come back. And we did. It was probably about two weeks later, um, took her back. And she finally recognized the difference between, you know, I'm all better. She was telling me and she was showing me how she was walking on both feet. Pleasure moments, pretty much all of it. She's a pretty pleasure kid to be around. You know, she likes shopping. I guess she's a typical female. Uh, she likes to go to the beach and just have fun. I try to teach her to be independent and to trust me. The main issue is here, the trust. The trust and don't lie to a child. Children can remember. So I never lie to her. I made her to trust me and trust my children and my husband, and we all faithful to her. If we tell her we take you to the mall or to the park, sure, we will take her to the mall, to the park. And if you tell her it's cold outside, you have to put a jacket on, we do not leave until she put the jacket on. And I keep insisting to say that for a child, three years old, by themselves, no mommy, no daddy around them, the best way is the stable house. Don't keep asking for, oh, can we have her to the weekend? Or can't... Okay, take her for an hour, two hours. Just keep her in the same house, under one roof, with the same rules. With the balloon implanted in her back, Farah went to the doctor three times to get liquid injected to expand her skin. Come on in here, let me look at you. Seven. All right, let's take a look at the, the expander and make sure that's not a problem, okay? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm.
لا 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 بس يشوف دخلك بس يشوف دخلك مش راح يمسك So, uh, Dr. Uh, Hall didn't expand it, right, last week? No, 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 he hand. just removed the dressing from her left thumb. Is she on antibiotics at all, or no? No. <laughs> 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 I don't spoil her. I don't uh, make her like she is special or give her uh, full uh, attention. No, because uh, uh, it's uh, wrong. Uh, when uh, she uh, goes uh, there, uh, they don't uh, have this uh, attention. Uh, yeah. We print for her her dad's picture. This way she can keep remembering him. When we talk about Gaza, no, she wants me. She wanted anybody go to Gaza, but she wanted to stay for Dar. She wanted to stay here. Ah. وين البني؟ يلا لا يا اختي انت انت لا يا اختي and we keep telling her no it's good to go to Hazi and we all go and visit you and she doesn't accept the idea لا وآية وعمو علي شوف كيف انت شاطرة يا we talk about the aeroplane. She said aeroplane used to be something, it's bomb. Now we made her to think that aeroplane is for, for vacation and happy time. And I wanted to make her think about that too, that Gaza is a good place to go back and uh, hopefully it will be a good place for her to go and grow up and have her education there. <laughs> الله أكبر لا إله إلا الله. Although Amal is Christian, she was mindful of Farah's Islamic faith and regularly took her to the mosque for Friday prayers. وعلم آدم الأسماء كلها. Today we have a, a surprise. So I would like to welcome Farah and also the reporter, uh, I'm sorry, uh, Miss, uh, uh, Mrs. Amal Jupran. Mrs. Amal Jupran is a Christian, a Palestinian Christian, which is, I'm honored to have her right here because I'm Palestinian too. I'm your brother and her brother also. So I'd like to welcome her because she's taken all of her time and effort to play a host for a very long time, to be a host for a very long time for, for Farah. Farah was burned. Uh, as a result of uh, the last year attack on Gaza. I would like to help Farah in her stay here by every mean, financially, uh, materially, support, emotionally, dua, prayer, etc. Two weeks before she was scheduled for a second surgery, Farah got an infection and had to be rushed to the hospital and the balloon in her back had to be removed prematurely. Turned the heater off and she stopped walking. So over the weekend, she was with a friend. So I picked her up on a Sunday evening and she was uh, with a high fever. She refused to take the supper, have her supper there. I took her home with pain. When I get Yay. home, I check her back and I can see three dots and it's really warm. I called Dr. Batra on his cell. We get there, he looked at her back, he said, it's infection, take her to the ER and we're going to have a surgery on her. Okay, here, Rania. Here, Rania. Uh, 
tus hijas. Es mamá. So the surgery was afternoon. Mama. Took about an hour and a half. Yes, happy. Yes, Elvin. Yes, Elvin. Hour and a half, and they came back. They spoke to me and to my husband, and they said 75% skin extend they succeed to do. She doesn't want this to go home with us. Oh, we're going to have Wednesday. Okay, three days, we'll be okay. هذا بخلي الكخة اللي في ظهرك يروح أو يروح كل الكخة اللي هون بيطلع هون عشان نزلته بزبالي لكن بزدله في واوا ظهرك عشان يروح الواوا منحط هذا عشان عشان يقيم الكخة من بلا حبيبي خلي لابس الكلسون جديد حلو ونلبس الأواعي ونلبس هاي البلوزة آه ونروع الدار نروع الدار عند عمو ميشيل يا عند عمو ميشيل What I'm afraid because he said to me we may need to put another extended back again in her back It's like oh my god they're going to open it and open and close it twice So I'm afraid on that point if they will do that that means we have to go back like two months back with her treatment, the way, the way she started was hard for her to walk and do all her activity. After Farah's second surgery, Amal became sick with bronchitis. And to avoid risk of infection, Farah was moved to another host family. But it was tough for Amal to relegate Farah's care to someone else. That's it. She wore diaper night time only. Oh, she did diapers? Yes, oh. I brought diaper. Unfortunately, Amal was um, not feeling well. And um, uh, Amal, she had set rules for Farah in, in terms of sleeping time. And uh, so it was kind of difficult um, uh, for us to find another host family who can be committed as much as uh, Amal. So I've been kind of uh, having some health issues. She is coming back to the number two host family. They host her uh, early in December for three weeks before she was with me. Luckily, we found uh, Tagreed and Salam Hassanin. At least in the 24 hours, give her 12 hours of sleep yeah, and rest. Sure, sure. So this is what it improves her condition. The more she gets healthy, it's better to heal after the surgery. Meet. Like, it, we did good, we did good. I'm, I'm, I'm happy she gained weight. I'm happy she is exercising the way you see her and she keep doing all that exercise with instruction is to stretch her muscles. So she's a happy person. Yes. In this condition, it's only three years old. So she needs a stable life. And because no, no blood relatives here, none mom or dad or somebody with her, to guard her for 24 hours, that's why she needs a stable place to stay and to inherit a, a routine in her daily life. Chat, Abus Anna, Habibi. And you can eat here, okay? Okay, you can eat with me? Yes. Habibi, I love you a lot, huh? بي تعالي زورينا مع ما خلته تغريد اوكي ونروح على الفارك نلعب هي هي كل شاطره سما اسمعي اوكي ما انا وياك زي ما انا خلاص 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 it's okay. Uh, she been starving. She been since 10:30 this morning. No food, no drink. So it's hard on her. I know now. Since Thursday, I've been telling her we have to have to fix uh, her legs. Doctor Hulse will take care of that, and she be ready to go back to Gaza to her hometown. She's excited for that. Hi. 
notice the change. He had a haircut. She wanted to. Oh, hell no, oh, hell no. Come on, try it quickly. No nap. أنا 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 عشان ناكل بوزة وتروح تلعبي مع الدوك نروح ناكل خروف دجاجي سمكي خمسة That's her case. Most of the work we were able to do is here and the left by and a lot of releases and, and improvement on the right leg. We weren't able to get a lot more out of here because it was just too tight. Really something we could do within the next immediate few months. Beyond that, we have to wait for her to grow and then see what's tight and what needs to be done. Do you advise us to keep her for three, four months for another optional surgery? Probably. I, would, I would tell you that, you know, for her to stay specifically for that is probably not necessary. Not necessary. Yeah, I would say you let her go back home. It's two years you know, from now. A few years from now, because okay. then we may be able to do more on the leg as well. Okay. Good point. So, yeah. Wonderful. Okay. Yeah. yeah, all right. <laughs> yeah. Sure. Thank all right. You. Okay. Thank you. All right. No, just the adults, no cameras. No cameras. Okay. ترجع تنامي بالتخير ايش مالك ايش حكيني واوا واوا خفيش بس اربط لك اجرك بس احسن عشان ما يجيش عليها وسخ عشان ما يجيش وسخ عليها يا حبيبتي بتخفيش يا قلبي في شيء شيء بوجع This past eight months um, has been very touching to watch her grow, to watch her recover, and watch her develop. I mean, she's become her own little person, and she's become a part of us. So to see a part of you leave is very disheartening, um, especially to know the challenges that she'll face in the future. That's very sad as well. For myself, it's going to be a bit difficult. You know, we got attached to her. We got, got a mixed feeling. You know, I want to go back to her family. Uh, we've been through her journey from day, the day she got here and uh, watching the progress she went through. So I'm happy that she's going back. But on the other hand, uh, uh, just like uh, be her separate from her own child. So it's going to be a little difficult. Who got all the whole candy? Me. We've been talking about it since early June after she finished her uh, last surgery. We said we have one surgery to go and then we go to Baba, which is her dad. 
And yes, 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 yes. By the time it's coming closer and we wanted her to be there before Ramadan, and every time we talk about it, she is pushing back. I don't think she is happy to go. <laughs> I love you. I love you. Well, from her point of view, I think it's going to be a bit difficult when she gets used to the life in the United States. Uh, uh, she pro probably get whatever she wants. Uh, she has uh, a, a big opportunity to do whatever she wants here. When she goes back, she's going to be limited, basically going to a, a mass, uh, a mass prison, and she can't. I'm worried about she may not be able to go to school uh, to do the things that child's supposed to be doing. Uh, so I'm kind of concerned about that. Habibi, Habibi. Thank you. This girl is, is amazing. She's, she loves to hug, and um, she loves the attention. And um, it, it was very heartbreaking to, to see her go. And um, the same thing with all of the kids who come here. We get used to them. We get attached to them. They get attached to us. So it was not easy. I think my mother is very emotionally involved, obviously very attached um, in, a, in a motherly position. So as her primary caregiver, as far as I've seen, she's um, going to feel a bit of a loss, you know? Although she's had three children, you know, I'm being the eldest and she's watched all of us grow and, you know, leave the nest at one point in time. This is a little bit of a different element. You know, this is a child that she actually watched go through trauma, go through surgeries, go through recovery, develop into a little, you know, young little lady. Arbi. Arbi, 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 Arbi. So it was, it's a little bit of a stronger element, especially with all of us involved. I feel like my mother's going to feel a little bit of a loss, a little bit of a challenge trying to deal with the separation. But all in all, my mother's very strong, very strong-willed. Um, very optimistic, so she's the type of person that you will persevere through anything. Okay. To the airplane, to Gaza, wow. then to see daddy, and when she grow up, she's coming to see, see daddy, us. Farah? Yeah. Farah, are you happy to see Daddy? <laughs> yeah. Mom? You come back to San Diego, right? Yeah. Hello, ma'am. Yeah. OK. Hello. Give a hug to Farah. Give a hug. But it's hard. It's hard to see a child going away, and you know he is not in his safe place. You know that Israelis can attack any time, even if our media doesn't cover what we see in Gaza, but it's attacking. Bye. Hi, Farah. Hi, Farah. And their house, it's on the border. From the windows, from the door, from the balcony, you can see Ajdod. You can see the air is checkpoint. It's easy. Some sniper, Israeli sniper, can direct shoot to this house. And she can be on the steps out and down, or she be, can be on the window. Or maybe another bomb can come from the roof and, and just, you know. She is not in a safe place, and I'm afraid. I'm afraid we lose for her. Bye. The year Farah left, the United Nations failed to stop Israel's incursion on Palestinian land, and any hope of peace was crushed. Hands shot up all around the Security Council on Friday as Brazilian Council President Maria Luiza Ribeiro Viotti called for those in favor of the resolution condemning Israeli settlement building. When Viotti asked for those opposed, one lonely hand shot up, that of Susan Rice, the American ambassador to the UN. 
While we agree with our fellow council members and indeed with the wider world about the folly and illegitimacy of continued Israeli settlement activity, we think it unwise for this council to attempt to resolve the core issues that divide Israelis and Palestinians. This was tough crossing the border from Egypt to Farah for 13 hours on the border, but we made it, we made it. Give her a hug, and she told me in Arabic, uh, I'm coming with you, and I said, لا خليكي, stay. I tried to tell her, when you grow up, uh, you're coming back, you're coming back, and I'm mom Michelle, and خلت وعدنا, to us. To come to her room, I need now to start cleaning the house and removing her stuff was really, it's like you lost a child. You're not going to see her again. We miss her. When Farah left, I thought Amal would forget about her after some time. But this was not the case. I saw Amal constantly worrying about her well-being. Amal and her family had taken care of injured kids before, but she always said there was something different, something different about Farah. Or was it Amal's own life stage that made it harder to forget and move on this time? Amal's daughter Rania also moved out of the home that same year. Time passed and Amal told me how difficult it was becoming to connect with Farah over the phone in Gaza. Waalaikum Assalam, Abu Hatim. Farah Mawjudi, Uaya. Hello, Marhaba. Ahlan, Im Hatim. Lila Khalto Amal. Khalto Khalto Amal. Marhaba, Mawla Sharaba. Shardat, okay, okay. Mahlish, Mahlish. In November 2012, a year and a half after Farah's return, there was another deadly attack on Gaza. As bombs dropped all around Farah's home, Amal tried to call her family every day to know if Farah was safe. Almost three years after saying goodbye to Farah, Amal hears the possibility of seeing Farah again. It took weeks for permissions to come through, but when things were confirmed, I called Amal immediately to share the news. Yeah. So we have the permissions and now we are going to buy the tickets. Wonderful. So we are going. So we are going. I had not seen her so happy in months and she immediately started preparing for the trip. What do you think size 6 or size 7 for Farah? Underwear. <laughs> for Shah which I believe now she is two and a half, two. I pick size four. La shahid al omr has sentin, and this is size three. It's to create something. You open it, you have three brushes, and there are three girls. Much as Amal was excited, I was worried about going to Gaza. It was one thing filming Farah's story in San Diego but quite another to follow her to the most volatile area in Palestine. Only a few months ago, Israel and Hamas had a confrontation that had resulted in the bombing of Gaza and death of over 100 civilians. Would I be safe? Is it smart to leave my children and head out to a war zone? Despite the risks, I felt compelled to follow her story. And the next step will be London. So we get it to London and Cairo. With a mix of excitement and dread, we started the journey from California to Gaza. My biggest concern is for my life. But Amal has a different kind of fear. What about if she doesn't remember me? Really, it's hard. Hopefully, but is it Thursday? If we make it there, I hope she will remember. After a layover in Los Angeles and in London, we finally arrived in Cairo late Friday evening. Local time is 10 to 9 p.m. In Cairo, we met up with the organizer of our trip to Gaza. He knew Amal and Farah's story and was concerned about the health of Farah's grandmother. 
in Cairo, she had surgery done. I had thought it best to keep our trip to Gaza, a secret from Farah and her family. And you told the family you are coming? You no, 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 no. We spent the night in Cairo and at six in the morning, boarded the bus to Gaza along with other members of the convoy. The Miles to Smiles group has been organizing travel to Gaza for people interested in visiting and taking medical supplies and donations. The uh, way to Gaza from Cairo will take five to six hours. If everything goes smooth in the borders there, in the crossing point, we will go to Gaza side uh, uh, early afternoon. On the way, we got a chance to meet other people on board the convoy. Each one was on a specific mission. I'm actually here to participate in the Miles for Smiles convoy um, because I've been working on the Global March to Jerusalem over the last, actually, two marches. This is my first time to Gaza, yeah. I've been to Egypt before. I've never been to Palestine. On our way to Gaza, we crossed the Sinai Peninsula and Suez Canal. As we approached the border area between Egypt and Gaza, I saw security vehicles in front and behind our bus. That's a security? Yeah, yeah. After six hours' drive and several rigorous checkpoints, our bus and the security vans made it to the Rafah border. There are two ways to go to Gaza, through Eris crossing from the Israel side or through Rafah from the Egypt side. Realistically, one cannot cross through Israel as they will not permit it. The only feasible way is through Rafah via Egypt, and that too is not easy. Egyptian authorities control their side of the crossing, and Hamas police controls the other side. Give me your passports, please. Check your pocket. Inside the Rafah area, cameras are strictly prohibited, and we used a discreet cell phone to capture this footage. As an international convoy with prior permissions, we waited for three hours to get clearance. For Gazans to get through, it could take much longer, or they may be turned away altogether. I wondered what Amal had gone through trying to cross over with Farah when she had no permissions. How long were you here with Farah? Between 8.15 and up to 6 p.m. outside. And here, I was around four hours just to beg, you know, just to negotiate with the officer. To let Egypt imposes strict restrictions on Gaza citizens traveling across Rafah. In periods of violent conflict between Gaza and Israel, the border is completely closed. Enter, out. We got our visas, and I could hardly believe we had actually made it to Gaza. A welcome committee greeted us as we crossed into Gaza, and the warm hospitality melted my fears away. <laughs> We arrived late at our hotel and could not go to meet Farah right away. She lives near the border with Israel, and we are cautioned not to venture that way at night. Um, right now it's almost 9 p.m. It's too late thinking about Farah. Too late to go see her, so I text him. I didn't see Farah, but I will see you tomorrow morning. Early the next morning, Amal drives towards Farah's home. I, no, I don't recognize anything. The road to Farah's house was uneven and bumpy. That's what I remember, the street like this, sand. Amal's excitement could that not be contained. Was, I felt like the distance farther because they were very close, walking distance to the American school. This is it? Okay, my little piece. Best, best, best. I believe this one. This, this is the house. 
As we approached the house where Farah and her family had experienced the huge tragedy, my pulse started racing. I remembered the front entrance from footage of the bombing. A surprise visit had everyone, and especially Farah, in a bit of a shock. Since it was summer vacation, everyone was at home. Farah's stepmother Alia, her sister Aya, and her stepsisters Shahid and baby Dima. <laughs> <laughs> Farah's stepmother suggested they look at the album that had pictures of Farah with Amal and her family. وين كنت تحطي تغسل ايديك بعدين في فوطة في البيك نغسل ايدينا لحنا نقطف تفاح ومشمش طب سمعيني صوتك سمعيني صوتك ايه اتش فرح في ديزني لان دار ملبس It seemed like Farah was not remembering, and that was tough for Amal. What did she say? I wanted to go talk to my mom. I realized at that moment that Farah had moved on in her life. She was no longer the little girl Amal had cared for, and the most important person in Farah's life now was her stepmother. الكل برضه كده بيستغرب من بيجي علينا صحافة كده الكل بيستغرب بيقول كيف انت غريبة من عيلة تانية وكيف هدول البنات كده بقوة متعلقين فيك يعني لدرجة ما بروح عند رصيد ام ام هون بتعلقوش كده فيها قبل فترة لما اجت قالت لي انت مديهم كل حنان امهم واكتر يعني فيش شي حدا بيهتم فيهم قد آليا had married Farah's father a few months after Farah's own mother's death in the bombing I was surprised to see her so attached to Farah لا كان مع محمد بنتين من اللي امهم توفت وانا جبت بنتين كنت يعني اول ما تجوزت اني كنت اني انا اخاف كنت لما اجي حمم هذه البنات كنت اخاف الاقيها كامله محروقه دائما اتعيط خلص امهم توفت شهيده ونصيبي عند الله خلص شفت نصيبه وخلص الحمد لله يعني انا من كنت وانا خاطبه 
كنت عاد زي اي بنت كنت فرحانه بعد ما تجوزت خلاص حملوني هذه المسؤوليه كان محمد دائما يقول لي لك الاجر عند الله قالت لي يا ماما اني انا مش مصدقه اني هذه خلت عملي هذه خلت ما كنت عندها بقول لها اه يا ماما يعني بعد كذا اقتنعت لقيت صدقت لقيت بتقول بدي اروح معهم مع امريكا يعني امال انا زي ازعق يا خالته امال يا فرح قول لها يلا وين حبيبه لا روح هلا بدي افقدك يا حبيبتي يا حبيبتي ما احلاكي كيف تعالي؟ ايش؟ كيف تعالي؟ اجي؟ لوين؟ Farah had grown up so much in the last two and a half years. She was fully aware of the reality of her life in Gaza. Where mama? I have an old. No, mama, mama, tell me. Where? In the jungle. In the jungle. And the Rabbi Alami. Tell me, speak English. You speak English. What's your name? But it was hard to judge how much Farah remembered of her time in San Diego. Amal was visibly depressed after visiting Farah. Honestly, I wish I did not met, I didn't met her, honestly. She's responsible for three sisters, Aya and Shad and Dima. Farah lived in a house full of people. She was no longer the only child being cared for by many adults in Amal's home. She was one of four children being cared for by an only mother and lived in an extended family of uncles and cousins and often helped out with chores and taking care of the younger ones. I asked her, when I hugged you when I came to your house, I hugged you, your pants were wet and your top was wet. What you were doing? She didn't answer. Later on, I found out she was mopping the floor. I don't know. I don't feel love. When you hug them, they don't hug back. When you kiss them, they don't kiss back. I, didn't, I feel like, uh, I don't know. I wasn't happy, I tell you. I was excited to come, but when I saw the situation, no. No, she's a victim. She's a victim. H I J K L M N O P U R S T U V. Amal tried ways to bring back the cheerful little girl who had sung Barney songs and filled her shirt with candy on her birthday in San Diego. Next time, won't you sing with me? Which exactly? Okay, Jamal. The set. Okay. Jamal. Okay. 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 Oh, hey, oh, hey, Ghazawiyi. Hey, Ghazawiyi. Oh. It broke my heart to see Amal's pain. No, body language. It's not the same. It's painful to me. It's very painful to me. But was it really fair to compare Farah's life in America to Farah's life in Gaza? And that is exactly what Amal was doing. Did she have the opportunity to have a better life, better education? Did you talk to her? Uh Farah's father was still a young man, but he had gone through a tragedy few can even imagine. In the attack on his house, he lost his father, three brothers, a sister and his wife, and saw his child get hurt in the most brutal ways. After the bombing, he had sent Farah away for treatment, 
and rebuilt his house and his life. I saw him resilient, determined to strive for a living and to provide for his family as best he could. He owned a small piece of land that he farmed with his brothers, providing barely enough for their combined families. He was attentive and affectionate towards everyone, and especially towards Farah. Farah, والله الواحد ما نعرف إيش اللي يصير فيها يعني حلتها بالمرة يعني محروقة مش عارف إما لما تلبس خواتة تلبس خواتة الشورت بتقول يا ماما أنا بدي زي ما علمي بتقول يا بابا يا ماما بنفعش. There was no trace of depression or bitterness, just an amazing strength. طب أنتوا ما فكرتوا تبيعوا الأرض وتبيعوا ال. لا احنا بيع احنا ما بنطلعش من الارض الارض لا هذه بنضلنا فيها احنا هن صامدين الارض هيك هيك عادات وتقاليد البلد ما حد بيبيع لا 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 حتى لو فلسطيني ثاني حتى لو بدنا نموت فيها احنا ما بنبيعهاش ما احنا There is no way they can sell, sell one inch of their land so a... Like most Palestinians I met he was proud of his family and his land يعني انت ما بتعرف ولا حد باع خوف لا 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 احنا ما بنبيعش خوف من اسرائيل لا 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 فرح yet amal was not satisfied with the care fara was getting especially her physical injuries بعده بيجي على كل اصبع حكيني ما تخافي مني مش رح انا اعمل شيء انا بس بدي اطمن بيجعك لا في إشي بيجعك هون ولا هون؟ Oh, I can feel it. Yeah, heel and the thumb. Not in good condition. She need more plastic surgery done, which is mean it, we can avoid the plastic surgery if it's more attention from the parents as a therapy, which is massaging the area with the lotion and make the skin be more smooth and soft. I give her the body lotion. I say, you give it to mama. And every day you by yourself, Farah, by yourself, take a little tip, on, little drops on your tip, of top of your fingers, and massage it and rub it, rub it hardly. She just looked at me. This is a big responsibility for a child like this. This is big responsibility, especially no adult can guarding her, you know, guarding her or guide her. تعملت بهاي الفترة بس خبرني. بدي أطمن أنا بدي قلبي يهدى. كان عملوا لها عمليات شو اسمه مساج في تدليك كمان تدليك اوكي تدليك يا كانت تروح على مصحة تعمل وانتم بالدار كنتوا تتابعوا كل يوم شي بن شي بن تروماتايز فور ا لونج تايم شي نيدز سام سوشيال وركر تو جو ات ليست توايس ا مانث تو توك to her one-to-one, and to talk to the family around her one-to-one. Amal gave out the gifts she had so lovingly bought for the children. She took special care to explain to the children how to use their imagination with the paint box. Okay. And it brightened everyone's heart to see the little ones so excited. It is true that there was no trauma therapist coming to heal Farah and her family. Yet I saw contentment in that home and wondered how people who had lost so much found a way to live on and smile. Amal had said Farah is a victim. Was she a victim of her family's economic condition or a victim of the war with Israel? As we drove back to our hotel, I learned that Farah lives in a small town called Beit Lahia, a poor farm locality on the outskirts of Gaza. 
There are no paved roads and no playgrounds. This area borders with Israeli territory and is the most affected by the conflict with Israel. It is constantly under surveillance by Israel Defense Force, with radars and drones and airstrikes are recurrent. People have to abandon their home and farm whenever there is warning of an attack. During IDF's operation Cast Lead in 2009, Farah's family had stayed and a phosphorus shell had hit their home. Although Farah's home is on the border, the entire Gaza Strip is in a war zone. Since 2006, when Hamas won the legislative election and became the governing body in Gaza, Israel and the international community has imposed collective punishment on the people of Gaza in the form of blockade, restricting the movement of goods and people through land, sea and air. This has created an economic crisis, with 80% of Gazans being dependent for food on UN aid. With an average birth rate of six children per woman, Gaza population has reached alarming levels and the infrastructure of Gaza cannot support its people. More than 20% of the population lives in extreme poverty and this is expected to get much worse over the years. Since 2008, there have been three massive attacks on Gaza with a heavy loss of life and destruction of civilian infrastructure. With the support of Western powers and non-interference of Islamic states, Israel cites self-defense as the reason for the attacks. For Gazans, life is about seeing their homes and lives destroyed again and again. And trying to rebuild again and again. Unless peace prevails and the blockade is lifted, there is no likelihood of life getting better for the people of Gaza or for Farah. When I saw her shoes, it bothered me. It's too tight. We have to work on the society. Don't want it more victims. She's not the first one and not the last one. Unless we do something, In a different way, by educating the parents before they have kids, then have kids, and how to take care of their kids. I'm sorry. I'm really sorry. I'm angry. <laughs> Amal felt more connected with Farah's grandparents and was happy to see them at the hotel the next day. Meeting Farah's grandparents was a humbling experience. I wondered how they found the strength after losing their daughter Rada, Farah's birth mother, in the attack. What I found out today when they surprised me here in the hotel, they have a new baby, and I was surprised because when I called, they never mentioned about the baby. And she told me, Rada came back home. This is Rada. And I understand what they meant. It's the Farah mothers, mother, mothers of Farah was her name, Rada. So they, they named their second, they named the baby child after her sister. I understand now why Ghazan families have so many children. It's because they don't know how many will survive the ongoing attacks. The grandfather offered to take us to Farah's house for a second visit, and on the way, he spoke about his late daughter. I 
قد ما تفرحي وفرحة خاصة من عيني بس بتأثر تأثرت كثير لما يعني بنروح عليهم بتأثر كثير كثير بنروح عيني الله يسلمك احنا الغابة احنا الغابة سلم عليها أهلين آه. Seeing their granddaughters was joyful and painful at the same time for Abu Hatim and Umm Hatim. They felt a strong discomfort visiting the house where their daughter met her tragic death. Their visit was equally awkward for Farah's parents. I asked Alia why she didn't go in front of Farah's grandparents. Her answer was not convincing, since she had appeared in front of our male camera crew. Who's boy? Who's boy? Farah, Farah's grandfather? Ah, oh, yes. Only later did I understand. It was out of respect for the memory of Farah's late mother. <laughs> she called me Khalto Jibran. <laughs> Amal was trying to teach Alia a better way to deal with Farah, but did not find it easy to convince her. That day, Amal discovered something that upset her even further. The children never got a chance to play with the toys she bought from America. The toys, so the kids that will take the funny kids is not the they will break it and throw it in the neighborhood. So she hide them in a seat in a suitcase, hide. They can't reach it. And the kids show me where in the suitcase. Would rather they break it and damage it. So what? It's a child. A child without toys. That's what kind of a child if doesn't play with toys? How they can share? How they can communicate with the society if they don't know how to play and share with toys? Okay. 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 Give her something to play. We went the second day, the toy is still up there. A top in a suitcase. When I say goodbye, I say, please, please, get it down. Okay, Mrami, okay, Mrami. Tayyip, Tayyip. I don't think she will do it. I don't know why Alia was not giving the toys to the children. Maybe she felt American toys were too precious to break. Amal wanted to bring Farah to the hotel to have time alone with her. When Aya started to cry, Amal didn't have the heart to leave her behind. The luxury of the hotel room was something new for Farah and her sister. 
هاي الدار اسا هاي انا ما اخذتها مؤقتا لإلي هذا اوتيل فندق اوتيل شايفه الواحد عمل زيك بوكا آه. آه. لا خلص خلص خلصنا بس ما تحلوا ذا واز ا جود ايديا تو Opportunity for a fresh air, beach, nice view, nice scenario around them, clean area. White place to play, big rooms. First of all, as soon as they walked to the hotel, their eyes were up to the ceiling. I believe this is the first time they go on an elevator and to go to the my bedroom. Jumping on the bed and sleeping in the bed. It's like they never slept in a bed And they were hungry. They took, took whatever there to eat. They are hungry <laughs> Her report card show that she's doing very good in school, but due to the, it's not really hard work, you know. Edge. Yeah, you Michelle! At the hotel, Amal connected with her husband, Michelle, in San Diego on Skype. Michelle showed Farah her old bike and sang goofy songs from their time together in San Diego. And suddenly, Farah started to remember. <laughs> Farah's happy smile showed that the child in her was still alive. And Amal had once again succeeded in bringing happiness into her life. I want to, I want to stimulate her memory. It seemed like it worked. It did work. It did work. And for the first time in many days, I saw Amal laughing. Listen, listen to it. Amal made a final attempt to convince Alia to give the toys to the children. Yeah, I'm not. 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 I'm not.
تكون شاطرة في المدرسة وتصير دكتورة إن شاء الله أيا بدك تصيري محامين بي أنت إن شاء الله إن شاء الله قول إن شاء الله إن شاء الله إن شاء الله بأمان الله طب خطر بيت Saying goodbye to Farah was very hard for Amal, and trying to level with her stepmom was frustrating. That day when Amal walked out of Farah's house, I felt she may be walking out of Farah's life. Just then, an amazing thing happened. Farah ran down to our car to say a final goodbye to Amal. Amal's joy cannot be described in words. It felt like in that moment when Farah spontaneously expressed her love for Amal, she forgot all her frustrations and vowed in her heart to keep trying to make Farah's life better. She came to the car. That was good. The mind of a child works in wondrous ways, I thought. Although Farah may have forgotten moments of her nine-month stay in San Diego with Amal and Michelle, she knew these people had a special place in her life. I remembered what Amal's daughter had said about her mother. My mother's heart is so big and it just, she gets so emotionally drawn into the situation. So she's been there day in, day out, staying up all night, all morning, everything for Farah. Amal did not care that Farah is living in a war zone or how the Palestine-Israel war erodes the rights of everyone, especially the rights of children. All she wants is to see her Farah happy. Amal's heart is as big as the Gaza Sea that holds countless sorrows. In the last six years, Gaza has seen three wars and deaths of 3,000 civilians, including over 1,000 children. Yet, it finds a way to keep on living and to keep on loving. As for me, I came back from Gaza a new person. I don't think I will ever again meet people like Farah's family. Just like the people of Gaza, their courage, strength and dignity will always be for me examples to live by.